Hey everyone, it's Eric here from Netflix. Got another video for you guys today. Hope you guys are all doing well. It's pretty nice outside. It's getting close. It's about five o'clock right now, but still working, still out here, still doing things. We got this mail in from you guys. Well, we're in Alexandria, right off of Duke Street in Northern Virginia. It's pretty close to Washington, D.C., and we get a lot of mail ins with data recoveries. We love seeing your guys' stuff here. Well, giving solutions for your guys' stuff here, right? So we got one of these. It just came like this. This is a Seagate. Was it momentous or no, a Seagate Barracuda. I'm not sure exactly what was going on. I think just not powering on, but it came like this. It didn't come in an enclosure. So maybe this is part of a desktop or maybe someone tried um, just to remove it from an enclosure and just not working at all. Yep, that's uh, Cortana back there, just trying to be my assistant. Maybe for Windows 12, maybe get Master Chief or somebody. So so I have an enclosure and we're just gonna check symptoms, right? Because that's always what we wanna do is we wanna start at the point of contact. Is this thing powering on? What is it doing when you plug it in? So the light comes on, but now I'm gonna slide it in and let's see if it uh, still stays on. Ooh, you see that, right? So the light went off immediately when I plugged it in. Is the disc spinning at all? No, it's completely dead. So since we see that the light goes off, it usually indicates that there is some type of short. Now on these drives, these are three and a half inch mechanical drives, have a spindle motor connection, and you also have everything that runs through the PCB. Now the PCB has a lot of things on this. This one, we're very lucky that this one connects via a SATA connection, which usually is required for communication with advanced data recovery tools. All drives have their own PCB that communicates with the drive itself. We're gonna go ahead and remove um, the, the PCB here and then take a look at that a little bit closer. Just a few screws so just come off and we have uh, the PCB that's exposed there. And what we're going to be using now is our thermal imaging tools. And what those thermal imaging tools are going to do, it's going to help find out where a short actually may be. Okay, so we can't just put, <laughs> put the PCB down, right, because we need to put a, a current through it. So a good thing is when you have a three and a half inch drive, usually the PCBs are in the right orientation, so it's very easy. So now what we can try is we can try our enclosure again. And ooh, look at that right away. What's that? We see an area that's causing the short, right? And then it just died. It all of a sudden just went out there. But we did see what happened, so let's try it one more time. Let's go ahead and remove it. Let's plug it in. But you can see there is a clear short. Right, so plug it in again. Oh, it looks like it. Oh, there we go. So we do see that component over here in this area is giving a problem. And it is lighting up and then it dies all by itself, right? So we're going to start there. We don't see anything else getting warm at all. The controller, nothing else gets warm. So using our thermal imaging, we did see that there is a clear short on this PCB. We need to go to the microscope to see a little bit better. So let's do that. Let's go right over here. It's right here. Oh, man, you guys can see me. All right, let's turn on the light because it gets so dark. There we go, makes everything better. So let's, let's see what we got here. All right, so this was the one that was giving a problem, right? So this is just a diode, right? And it, it seems to be the, the problem, to measure it. And we do see that there is a short there, right? Since we see this, um, what we could do is just to swap it out and replace it, or at least just remove it and then see if that is uh, causing the, the point of failure there. So let's go ahead and do that. Dun, 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 dun. Remove it. This is a really similar one, so this should work too. Oh, look at that. Ooh, just melt it right there. We get a little more of that side. Perfect. All right. Touch it up. OK, 
Okay, looks good. Right. Okay, let's clean it up. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's check it again now since we have our newly assembled uh, Man, it's getting dark. Oh, let's I go back. Oh, it's dark. So we have our newly assembled PCB here Let's go to the thermal cam and see if it's still giving the same issue or if we resolve at least a short in that part So let's go ahead and take a look. We can switch over. Um, all right, so we have this one here. Let's see. So let's plug this in See if the short's gone. Oh, that looks normal. That looks really good. Look it changed behavior changed <laughs> so we replaced the diode um, this looks to be pretty normal as far as power flow goes so what we're going to do is let's just go plug it back in and hopefully it'll show up we'll screw it back and then see all right so it's in let's see if it should, should hopefully it'll just stay on now all right the drive does spin up hopefully no clicking <laughs> it's not blinking it's not reading uh, let's see here. Is it didn't Maybe we still got a problem. Maybe we can't read it on Windows. Let's see. It is spinning. Disk management doesn't show it. So we still don't see it in disk management here. But it is spinning now. So it looks like the power is going through, but there still is a problem. So we're gonna go over to our advanced data recovery tools and see if we can read the drive a little bit differently because Windows only does very basic things. If you have a perfectly good working drive, then you can do transfer. So, so let's go over to our advanced data recovery tools, work with the drive a little bit further from there. So we're gonna plug it into our advanced data recovery tools. And our tools are able to read the drive. We can see our password information, and uh, lots of other goodies on the drive that gives more specifics. We can even check our sector edit and we're able to see that fine. So work with the drive a little bit more and then we can see that there are six heads on the drive. So mechanically, all of them look to be actually healthy and okay. We were able to create an image and we can actually see the data and recover it for the customer. So anyways guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this data recovery on this uh, Seagate Barracuda two terabyte drive that's not powering on. We were able to recover the data with some PCB knowledge, some donors, and some advanced data recovery tools. We're right down the street from uh, Arlington, Virginia, and Alexandria, and right outside of our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. If you guys are local, come on by. If you guys are out of state, we do have a mail-in service. All of our links are in the description below for contact information that way. So hope you guys enjoyed watching, and see you guys next video. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Bye.